you've seen her on Colbert and Comedy Central, and she has a special on Netflix. Please welcome the very funny Aparna Nancherla. Hey. Hi, guys. Good to be here. How are you guys doing? Great. Great. Pretty big news for me. I found out my therapist is raising her rates. Thank you, yes, so I guess I'm cured. <laughs> pretty, pretty big development. Sometimes you don't realize how close you are to a breakthrough, and then there it is. I think, I think growth works in mysterious ways. I go to therapy for, among other things, anxiety and depression. In today's terms, that means sometimes my brain is extra AF and... <laughs> then other times it can't even. That's sort of the range I experience emotionally. I've been trying to develop some more positive life habits. I have been trying to be on my phone less. Now iPhones have that screen time feature. It tells you how long you've been on your phone that day, how little you've actually lived. It's very helpful. So now I've been trying to take technology breaks. Like sometimes when I'm on, on my phone, I'll look up and I'll be like, you did it. <laughs> you know, it's very, very healthy. Yeah, I've been trying to be kinder to my body. I don't want to assume anyone else is degenerating at a cellular level. I was just in LA and talking about aging there can be a little dicey because people are like, is it real? You know, it's not, it's not a fully accepted practice there yet, but. I've been trying to be more aging positive. I actually learned about an animal that doesn't age the way most of us do. Apparently, naked mole rats, their cells don't break down the way the rest of us mammals do. And I don't know, that feels like the trade-off, right? Like, no one, no one got excited when I said naked mole rat. <laughs> if anything, you got a little sad. I feel like they're the catch-22 of the animal kingdom, where it's just like, live forever, but <laughs> you are a small bag of skin in the dark. <laughs> oh, that was a real roller coaster. <laughs> No, I was like, that's not fair. They probably have different beauty standards than we do, you know. <laughs> Theirs are probably not based on sight or touch, but <laughs> I do feel like the naked and naked mole rat, that implies something happened, right? Like there was fur and then there was an incident and then there was no more fur. And judging by their PR cycle, they're still not ready to talk about it, but. <laughs> no, they're pretty cool. I also learned they can hold their breath for up to 18 minutes which, for your reference, is about a third of an episode of The Great British Baking Show. <laughs> if you also watch that breathlessly like I do. <laughs> they also don't experience several kinds of pain, like those three dots when someone's writing you a text and then nothing sends. <laughs> they don't feel that. <laughs> they don't have that spiral. Yeah, most rodents live until they're four. Naked mole rats live well into their 30s. They're just thriving, switching careers, getting divorced, doing it up big. And I'm in my 30s now. It does feel like the beginning of the end. You know, it feels like the first time you have to acknowledge that your body is limited. I got injured my shoulder the other week from doing nothing. Like I was sitting on the couch and then my shoulder was like, mm, and then that was it. It was just <laughs> done for a week. It was like, I don't wanna play this week. I kind of think of my body as a boy band now, where it's like every month a new part pursues a solo career, and <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. We've always had a very divisive sound. It's like, what kind of band has three tambourines? It's too many tams. We're playing with fire. I do admire how bold our bodies are. I'm always trying to be a bolder person. I don't think it's gonna pan out in the way I want it to. I'm an introvert, which I know is always a twist for the audience, because people are like, oh, but you're drag queen stage persona, you know? <laughs> I'm 
laughed a little hard. Um, <laughs> it's hard sometimes to be a quiet person in comedy. You, don't, you do get that question where uh, people will be like, you're so shy and reserved, how do you do stand-up? And I always want to be like, well, you know, you're so rude, how do you maintain relationships? <laughs> I, just, I feel like... I feel like we're both subverting expectations, really. Really, we're both brave. Uh, and I just touch their heart. It's hard to rally when you're an introvert. You know, you can't be like, where are my innies at? Don't make some noise. <laughs> I feel like the people who most relate to me are never in the room, and I can only deeply respect them for living their truth. I try to show up to things, though, when they matter to me. Like, I did the Women's March last year, and, uh, yeah, give it for the Women's March. But I helped with the rally before the march, and I had to run around in between speakers, so I brought my boyfriend with me, mainly just to hold my bag, because sometimes it is like, how do you make the patriarchy work for you, you know? <laughs> so, I was like, here, honey, hold this. I gotta go resist. Um, <laughs> So I was running around, the rally ended, the march started immediately, there was no lag time. I just started marching. We got separated from each other. I realized we didn't have a plan for if that happened. So as I was marching, I realized he had my bag, which had my phone, my ID, my wallet, my keys, everything. So I basically ended the march with no identity, no money, no way of contacting anyone or getting anywhere. And a man had taken that all away from me. <laughs> So I was like, this feels like the right message for today. Um, I guess I'm just role-playing The Handmaid's Tale at this point. But I'd never been in that position before, so I was just wandering the city afterwards. I guess still marching, if you want to think of it that way. It was, it was just a different cause at that point. But eventually I saw the public library, and I was like, they'll be able to help a small child who's lost. So... I went to the front desk, I told the woman what happened, and she was just like, well, you know, you could write your boyfriend a letter. And I was like, oh, oh no, this is why people don't read anymore. So then I left, kept marching. Eventually I saw the Apple store. I was like, the Apple store, uh, brands will save us all. So I went in there, and that was truly the opposite extreme, because they were just like, we've been expecting you. Um, <laughs> We know where you are. We know where your boyfriend is. <laughs> Did you know you have a son, you know? Um, <laughs> and then they were just so helpful. They were like, do you need your boyfriend's social? Do you need his pin code? Do you need his blood? We just have a little bit. Um, we actually have a lot of his blood in the back. Uh, but then I didn't even need to find him because they just gave me his identity. Um, I'm also him now. <laughs> it's mostly the same. I just get paid a little more, so it's good. But uh, thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of the show.